my profession since college was in like the wine industry, the wine side of things. When COVID hit, the sales element completely changed. You're, you're basically just emailing and just kind of in like a pause mode, really. The, the transition from wine sales into, you know, opening my own Molino is kind of coincidental. You just couldn't get a real tortilla in New York. I mean, there's hundreds of Mexican restaurants in New York and only five maybe used actual masa. And I think at that time it kind of clicked. I was like, yeah, I think I just want to do a Molino. At the very start of this, I was looking at industrial mills and they're quite expensive. I definitely had found Macienda in the past. So I followed them, I was aware of what they were doing. And I suppose on Instagram maybe they posted something about a Molinito and I was like, that's insane. That's incredible that something like this would have just, you know, just been released just as I was getting into this. And I immediately was like, all right, I'm buying this. It arrived and sure enough, you know, in the vestibule, it was this like giant machine. I, I guess somewhere along the way, it lost the box and all the packaging and stuff. I didn't realize that you could like disassemble it. So it was quite a bulky, heavy machine, but you know, it got there and it, and it worked, so. The second I could nixalize and mill my own corn. Everyone was making like bread, like everyone became a baker. I went the other way. One of the few people making just masa all day, every day. But then, you know, what do you do when you have pounds and pounds of masa, you know? I just started posting the masa I was making and, and the tortillas I was making. And uh, soon enough, people started DMing me being like, hey, are you selling that? Like, are you selling, can I come buy masa? Can I come buy tortillas? If people wanted it, I was like, sure. I let them know, I was like, listen, I'm just testing right now, but if you want, of course, like I can make you some masa. And it wound up becoming a lot of orders. And then uh, I would bring it to the, the wine shop that I was helping run and have people meet me there or, <laughs> As fun as it was and as great it was to see people were interested in masa and stuff, it was just the unknown element of it was extremely stressful. You know, I found a space around December before the pandemic. It took forever to get it built out. I literally just borrowed money from my mom and my brother and then opened up three business credit cards and immediately <laughs> maxed them out just to get project by project each piece of the restaurant built out. So, you know, at the peak of the pandemic, my mornings would be, you know, mill corn, make tortillas, go manage the wine store, and then immediately from there, kind of go project manage, you know, in the evenings, uh, the build of our, of our cafe. And then, yeah, then I would come home and probably make a giant margarita and <laughs> nick some nice corn for the next day. So in, in July, we decided we were just gonna open, even without construction being done. So we just, two tables, put them right by the front door, got an extension cord, put a, our point of sale up there, and um, literally just one day without any announcement, just opened the doors. And it was crazy because we were like very busy that day and, and every day since. What really, really fascinated me was, was making tortillas, making masa, and just talking to people about, you know, heirloom corn and how important it is that, you know, we create an appreciation for it. You never have any idea what you're getting into until you do it. And this project was so much bigger than I thought it would be. And it was so much more daunting and like, there was so much more risk for failure. But I think you either have to be crazy or naive to like decide to open a business at all. So.